start. So hi everyone to the Cubit community meeting. Can you hear me by the way? Yes, we can. Great, okay, thank you. So first of all, please don't hesitate to record your attendance in the meeting minutes, which I'm going to share soon. One second. Let me see if I find the chat. There it is. So next one is uh, introductions. Um, first of all, we have the um, opportunity to, if you are an adopter, a newly adopter for the Qubit project, please add your organization to the adopters markdown, which uh, you will find the community, the link to the, um, to the document inside the meeting minutes. Um, second of all, you can follow us on Twitter and you can visit the community page um, if you want to chat besides just uh, attending this meeting, like for example, a cube with deaf mailing list and so on. And of course, you can uh, join us as a GitHub project member if you want to contribute. So we would take any contributions. This doesn't necessarily have to be code contributions, but also documentation contributions are also welcome. Um, this leads me to um, the question that whether we have any new members this week that would like to introduce themselves. I figure not. Okay. And so you can um, see our schedule check in. Um, also in the meeting notes and the call for papers check-in also in the um, community um, repository uh, below the events. Um, which brings me to the point that Qbert v11 release has been moved back one week. Um, the mailing list has the announcement and the release schedule has been updated accordingly. Um, the second point I wanted to raise um, is that we want to introduce a kind flake label to mark issues and PRs related to flaky tests so that we can filter them more easily because we think this is very important work um, since it, uh, um, at, uh, it reduces the waiting time for everyone when they are waiting for the PRs to get merged and also the frustration of developers will be reduced by this work. Um, so yeah, that's everything from me. If you want, you can still add some things to the agenda if you want. So, okay, then let's switch to the open floor. So anything any community member wants to raise or any attendee here wants to raise? Can you still hear me or did I lose my audio? <laughs> no, you're fine. Nothing from my side. Okay, because there is utterly silence. I was just wondering. Okay. Thanks for that. Okay, if there is no open floor item, then we can go next to the pull request. I need attention. Um, I prepared a couple of those. If you want to raise your own, please go ahead and add them to the uh, document. Um, I've been looking at uh, one of the uh, Felix um, PR, that will be second, this one, 
Daniel, you're only sharing a, a small portion of your screen for some reason. At least that's the way it appears for me. Yeah, I've been trying to let me let me try to increase that portion. I think they have changed the um, they have changed the screen sharing feature. And so I'm trying to increase the portion. Wait a second, what's that? Interesting. Oh, well, I don't know. That's strange. Okay, is it better now? Mm, I don't see a thing, actually. You don't see anything. Okay, sorry for that. So, um, I'm not sure how we can proceed. I'm just going to try to reshare my screen. Sure. Mm. So wait a second, let me try to do it in a different way. So, okay. Try to do it like that for a while. Okay, try to do it again, share the screen. Advance. Push your screen. Share again. Now I see big white rectangle and it's gone oh well i don't know why it's not working it okay should, no worries it should be working regarding let me try to just do it like that one i'm just going to try this one yeah i should have prepared better i guess but since they now I see the corner of something. <laughs> the corner. Okay. I see a green frame, and I always thought that I would probably, if I would center the window inside that green frame, uh, it would share that portion of the screen. Am I wrong in assuming that? I I can't. <laughs> I normally share an entire desktop. Okay. Um, because I have a multi-monitor setup, I guess that doesn't work for me. So yeah, I, I, I do too. And um I I consolidate it down. For Zoom, yeah, Zoom isn't doesn't handle multiple monitors well. Oh uh, well, okay. In earlier versions it worked quite reasonably like I could just share my window and it would be fine, but yeah. So it doesn't even let me um, let me select that window somehow. So I was wondering whether I could do that. So I think then this make, doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to try to drop the link inside the chat. Fair enough, fair enough, thank you. So that we, that we have that. So first PR I wanted to talk about was this one, which I've just put into the chat. It's about, um, it's by 0x Felix, and uh, he has a PR open for VertCuddle. Cuddle. Do not clear memory when implicitly inferring instance type. I'm just reading it through so that people have a basic clue about what it is about. Um, there are currently two reviewers assigned, but there is no feedback from, from these yet. It's pretty fresh, but I wanted to ask for people that are interested in that. So I'm just going to say that if people are interested in looking at this one, then please assign yourself, or I can assign you if you want. Any takers? Okay. So we leave it at that. And the second one is this one by a new contributor. This is about, um, he seems to be wanting to fix a bug that he spotted. 
something like uh, the close file that he tries to fix. I haven't looked at that, but yeah, he's just uh, adding a defer stream close. Seems to be fair enough that there might be something missing there. Um, so if anyone has a time, this is just a two line change or two lines are being changed with an add a addition of uh, defer stream close and defer f close um, operation. So that might be an easy taker. Is there anyone here that wants to take this? Okay, so then I'm going to assign myself and see how I can go with that. Okay, this one is a draft, but that's still interesting. This is starting on the work of uh, the um, Z390 um, architecture support. Um, this is just Markdown, so maybe we don't even um, need to look at that right now, but I just wanted to mention this because it's interesting um, and so that people can follow on that. So I'm just going to drop a link here. And now that we've mentioned that, there is one by Miguel. Okay, this one is, I think, uh, fixing a CVE. Um, so let me see. I think, Miguel, you're on the call, right? I just saw you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, so yeah, I just noticed this morning that uh, we were using like some very old version of the the HTTP server code, and that thing brought brings in some libraries. And they have some reported CVs. From what I understood, we are not actually, let's say, tripping the CV, but still better to just update the, the versions and do not consume those uh, versions with known CVs in them. So I al already have like the approved tag. I'm just looking for an L L LGTM. Okay, fair enough. Although I see that there are 140 eight files changed so it might not be a very easy review but i guess most of it is vendoring right everything i mean there is like two changes in the code base but pretty much because they changed the uh, their api so now the structs that we need to use are named different and have different attributes but yeah out of those 100 and something like two files are outside of vendoring okay that sounds fair thanks Okay, since Welcome. I see I am assigned somehow, <laughs> and I think I looked at this today already, um, so I'm just going to take another look at that. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, if there are no more pull requests that need attention, then we can go straight to the mailing list review. I am also dropping the link to the mail I found, which is the only thing, uh, or which is the only mail since last week from the community meeting, which I brought up um, into the chat. This is about um, Dermit Shah asking for enabling using scripts to modify VMI definition. Um, so he's asking for looking at the PR, um, which enables VMI owners to use shell Python scripts to modify VMI definition before its creation. Um, and I am asking for anyone to maybe take this up and to give him some feedback. So this 
sounds pretty reasonable to me to be able to do this. And since you provided the implementation um, already, this might be fair. But yeah, I'll leave it up to anyone to take this up. I've added the email link into the into the chat. And I'm also going to add the PRs. I guess the, the other one is in the shoe box. Yeah, so I'm just adding those both to the chat. Okay. So then let's go to the box scrub. Real quick, so I'm just going to do the finishes list, which I'm just going to drop into the chat. So this one I looked at already, so I'm, I've just assigned Matthew who wanted support for multi VNC. Then someone is looking at the disk expansion failure, which sounds like six storage to me. But the thing is, this looks like, I don't know if it's Chinese. I guess it's Chinese. You can assign it to me. Alex, yeah, sure, I'll do. Thank you. No problem. You know, I'm not sure if you can, can, can you do, can you make sense of that? So should we probably ask for more information in non-Chinese? Uh, no, it's pretty clear, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's a, the, the, just the picture is in Chinese. Hmm. Okay. The text is in English, unless we're looking at different issues. No, no, it's actually, it's, it's right. But I was just thinking whether there, there is a, screenshot of a Windows virtual machine, I guess. And I was just wondering whether we need something else from the uh, from the labels that are displayed in Chinese, but yeah. No, okay. no, I, th I have an idea what's happening there. Okay. Just Great. have to look up Windows docs. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Okay, so. Next one is an issue with Kimi guest agent. It seems to be not running on Windows. This is also Chinese, I guess. He's trying to run a Windows 7 QCAR 2 image. Installing Vertio QBA into, inside then using this QCAR 2 image. Anyone able to help here? It's a pretty old Kubernetes version, but yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it seems like it's actually a problem of the Windows. I'm not quite sure if you anybody with sufficient knowledge. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I, I, I couldn't, I don't know anyone being speci specifically proficient with Windows VMs in, in the community. Um, On the other hand, I see that the operating system is Ubuntu. The, the underlying uh, operating system is Ubuntu, as far as yeah, I, know, sure. I understand. Yeah, but yeah. that should, yeah, that should not really matter. Um, the thing is, we should create a channel for the uh, for the guest agent, and the guest agent should just start and uh, connect. Um, yeah, I, I will ask for 
maybe translation of the error message and see if there is anything we can help. But uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I... I'll do that right away, right? So so that we don't miss that much or lose that much time. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Means that's by Felix. Have a couple of CVE findings for Python three nine. Okay. So, since I'm not sharing my screen, I'm talking about this one, which is about CVE findings for Python 3.9 and QGrid version 1.0, which I am unaware of. Where to find those? Is that inside? Oh, where is that? Okay, but it's already assigned to Q, so I'll leave it at that. Sorry, double muted. Which one was assigned to me? Um, I just, I'm not sure if I, yeah, I just posted it into the chat. So this is the CVE findings for Python 3.9. And actually I'm totally unaware that we are using Python inside somewhere but yeah you might know more than yeah, that's a confusing one i think the client maybe but i don't know if that's technically a core cubert project right whoever's yeah, filed that seemed to know what they were talking about but it would confuse me it looks yeah. like the image the chemo images the he mentions the chemo image here yeah and that's would be as part of the launcher image. Uh, part of the images, got it. Okay, so I think we are past the last seven days. Um, then with that, we can close the box scope, I'd say. Um, regarding flaky test fixes, we don't have any this week. Um, which brings us to the end of the meeting. And I would give anyone to chime in here a final round if he wants to, if they want to. Okay, then sounds like no one has anything to say anymore and uh, let's close it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I have a uh, question for Edward uh, regarding that device plugin approach they're working on. I was not able to uh, attend the previous call. So, so uh, Edward, uh, uh, for, any, for any new interface that we need to, that we plan to add, uh, what will be the process? Can you please uh, confirm on that? Because uh, earlier we, th I, we thought, 
the code for the plugin approach will be in a separate repo, but seems like uh, uh, for the two interfaces that are implemented, we have the code inside the Hubert repo. Um, at the moment, we are uh, we are final finishing the the pasty binding, mm -hmm. which has uh, which it's it's like it was supposed to have a CNI, and I think it will have a CNI by its own. But it's still uh, unclear if you need to develop a CNI or we will use an existing one. But we are in that place uh, at the moment. I think it should be ready until next week. And uh, uh, the question is, uh, which one of the these parts uh, you will need? There, there was a change that I didn't didn't update it in the document yet, the, at least in the design, is that uh, we decided uh, for simplification to to leave in the core some. Uh, some integrated bindings, like for example, uh, anything that requires a top device, uh, we will leave it inside and will not create a sidecar for it. I mean, we'll give an example how to create a sidecar, mm -hmm. but we will not uh, require it. I mean, it will be as part of the as part of the core project. Uh, what else? And we'll probably leave some some others, like uh, SROV will also be kept in. Uh, and uh, I guess that's it. Uh, that's the main ones. Pasty will get out, uh, and uh, and at least we are supposed to to give the community uh, examples of how they can create their own bindings completely. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not. I think that's not ready yet. Uh, the what we are planning to finish until next week is to have. The pasty one, which also includes a, C a small CNI addition, so that should close the uh, the sidecar part and the CNI part. Okay. But I but depends on what you exactly need. So um, if you need more than a simple sidecar, or, or if you need more than a sidecar and the CNI, then I guess the complete uh, example will be the bridge. Binding, which is the most complex one, mm -hmm. and that's that's planned for the next, uh, I don't know, few weeks further. Okay. But we should. But if you have something specific that you want to implement, then you can, we can start discussing. Maybe it's enough what you we have until now. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Edward. I will make sure to update uh, in the next call here. I will give a summary of what we have because next week is also, uh, we should have uh, the current, what is the current state of the development. So I will update next week. Okay, cool. Okay, anything else that we want to mention? or questions to ask? I just wanted to maybe raise one thing not related to this one is uh, that yesterday uh, there is a weekly, I don't know if it is said here about it. Uh, there is a SIG API now and uh, there are discussions there about APIs and backward compatibility and the ability to upgrade on all kinds of related uh, topics. Um, so, if people are interested in this, uh, in this uh, I encourage you to come there. There are some parts that are very interesting. For example, last uh, yesterday, there was a discussion about uh, webhooks that are, that are causing a lot of issues during uh, upgrades because uh, the, the webhook is, the webhooks are upgraded the last in the in the chain of the upgrade. If I I hope I'm not mistaken here, but this is causing some uh, intermediate issues, uh, especially when when someone is changing uh, feeds. So anyway, anyway, there are a lot of uh, discussion uh, about API. So if someone is creating uh, PRs 
that are changing the API, then maybe it's a good opportunity to go there and, and raise their changes. Eddie, is there some announcement already where this is going to happen? Did we create yeah. an email to Kubota? Yes, there is a. I think there was. Uh, it was sent uh, an invitation. It's also with Zoom. I think okay. I can check when it's what the what is the time. But uh, it's. I think it's about the same time. Let's see. It's on so it's on Monday, uh, right? No, it's on on Tuesday. And per what I see, it's the same time as as this meeting. Just okay. on Tuesday. Okay, fair. Then we're all set. That's great. Okay. Um, I guess that we might need to announce that also besides Kubernetes dev mailing list, also inside the Kubernetes community repository somehow or somewhere, or also on the um on the um um yeah, I think it's inside the community repository somewhere, but I don't know to be honest yeah. exactly. This will be. I think it needs to be market market better. Yes, so people will come. But I think the 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 develop the contributors that are changing the API, or su suggesting new changes to the API additions or removal or whatever, they should. It's a good place to be because uh, it actually discusses. Uh, the ability to of the changes if they if they are a fit or not to to the I would say the stability of the API. True. It could also work the other way around. So people that are members or part of the SIG API meeting could also ping people that are actually opening PRs against the API and make them aware that this meeting exists and that we they need to talk somehow. Yes, I think there was, I don't know if it exists already or not, but there was a, it was raised that we should label the automatically the changes to the API, like the, all the, all the CRDs that we have we'll, there. We already do. Oh, okay. So that's like or the filtering. We, I, I think the, it, yeah, I think it was raised that uh, there is a, an, a way to enforce it, but we, I think the, we don't want to do it at the moment. Like we could enforce something like that. It must be discussed before it, uh, the changes get in, but this is uh, to, we, I think the, the wish was not to make it, but to create a strong enforcement here. So at the moment it's just uh, discussions and making it, uh, make, giving awareness of issues and stuff like that. Hmm. Eddie, did you, did you actually create the issue for this? For, for what? <laughs> <laughs> for, for the problem you described uh, with the upgrade uh, being in place and uh, possibility of using some new fields which were added but still are not uh, protected by the webhooks. So the, I think uh, uh, yesterday the, we just took one uh, uh, one PR that did the change and uh, we discussed the changes there and the problems and we went to the Kubernetes uh, suggestion of how to add fields in a stable uh, API, fields that are alpha which you may change and, and we had a discussion about it and the discussion, uh, I mean, the, the main problem, uh, it, at least this is my understanding, is one of the problem is this webhook that is, is changing uh, after a while, after everything else is changing. And I, I think it may even cause problems to what we have. So I don't know if I, if I can open a, an issue about it because it's, it's very vague. Maybe we should just uh, discuss it uh, before we open something. Like maybe maybe create a scenario to ex to express what can go wrong. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, I, I can imagine uh, how it can go wrong. Uh, now you went when when you did bring it up. Um, yeah. 
So I'll I'll be I'll talk with you offline and we'll create. I will try to see your uh, scenario and I I can write it down if that's it. Sounds good to me. Okay. Do we have anything else that we want to discuss? I would have one one more note, I guess. Uh, so we also we, somebody reported an issue with the alpha release we have right now. Um, let me try to find the issue. Mm. Should be, should be in the chat. Um, basically, there is some regression with uh, emulated environments. And if anybody has the time to have a look on it, yeah, I would really appreciate it. Um, yeah, just putting it out there. Maybe we, we just postpone the release uh, for a bit if we, if we find this uh, as a regression. By the way, I think this is on the wrong repo, right? Cupid GitHub IO? Yeah, yeah. So that's why we didn't see it, I guess. Exactly. That's why I'm putting it here. Thank you. I'm going to take care of moving it. Okay, so I guess you should. I think you should ask him to open it there and add more information, right? It's like at the minimum, we need the VMs as manifest. Yeah, I think. I think, but I don't know. I mean, there, there is a function to transfer it to somewhere else. I'm just going to mm -hmm. do this right away. Super. My, my understanding is that you can just replicate it with really any VM, but uh, yeah, if we don't re reproduce it, I guess we can ask for an hour. But we have... It. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's okay. okay. Lugo, I, I'm sorry, I missed what you were saying. Uh, you wanted to add something, so... Um... Please say it again. No, this, I was just re re responding to that, that probably uh, the information is good enough that we should try to reproduce it because it seems like it's a, uh, you can reproduce it with NVM. Hmm. OK. OK. Is it, is it, uh, it odd? Like, if we can reproduce it with NVM, how okay, can don't I think we have upgrade the. Uh... So this is a uh, environment without KVM. So mm. uh, we don't test that, unfortunately. unfortunately. Okay. So uh, what we want to open a Cupid Dev discussion somehow about that, whether we want to postpone the the release somehow and until that is getting fixed and reproduced. We still have a week, so maybe not. Maybe let's revisit it in uh, next week. Hmm. Sure. Okay, uh, at least people are aware, right? Okay, that's fine. Yep, and that's also a, a reason why we're not creating a new uh, beta deck just for now. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, then anything else?
Okay, then we are at the end of the meeting, I guess. Um, thanks everyone for your attendance. Have a nice week until next week and uh, see you next week. Bye. See you.